So it's a Sunday morning. You wake up here at school and you're like, man, today is just going to be a good day. You get up and you go and you get ready for church. And before you head to church, a friend comes up to you and he's like, hey, I want you to uh, meet me later today and we're going to go out. I'm going to take you and, and get you something to eat. I have some extra food left over and I just want to bless you today and I want to give you to get something to eat. And you're like, yes, awesome. Because you know that in the SDR, in the dining room, they don't serve food on a Sunday night. And so you're excited because your friend just came up and said, hey, I want to give you some food. So you go to church and you come back from church and you get some lunch and you head down uh, to the lake and you're swimming, you're running around, you're burning off a bunch of exercise. And you head back, head back to where your friend said that he wanted to meet you. And you see him actually arguing with another student. And you're like, man, like, what's going on? I thought like him and I were supposed to have food today and, and have dinner. And so you go up and you, and you say, hey, like, what's going on? Like, why, why are you guys fighting? And your friend who was going to give you the dinner, he looks over at you and he says, he says, this guy just ate all our food. And so not only do you not have anything to eat, but I don't have anything to eat as well. And you're like, man, like, what, like, what, what can I do? And so, so you look to the, look to the person that, that ate all the food and you say, you know what, man, it's all right. It's all good. You were hungry. You need something to eat. You could have it. And here's an extra five bucks for next week, next Sunday, in case you don't have any food either. And you tell your other friend, you said, you know what? I'll take you down to Portillo's and it's on me. It's my treat and I'll take care of it and I'll buy you, buy you food even though you offered to buy me some. You see, in a sense, as we look into the book of Philemon, that is this, almost exactly what, in a way, that what Paul did for the slave Onesimus. You see, Onesimus was a runaway slave. He ran away from Philemon and Paul was on house arrest. And so finally, uh, Onesimus came into the area of where Paul was, and he had this conversation with Onesimus. Paul and, Paul and Onesimus were talking, and, and through that conversation, Onesimus actually became a Christian. He came into the belief and the faith of Jesus. And so I'm going to read through it, starting in verse 8, and then we're just going to break it down and, and kind of go from there. So... Starting in verse 8, it says, Accordingly, though, I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required. Yet for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but of your own accord. For this, perhaps, is why he was parted from you for a while, that, is, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you will receive me. If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand, and I will repay it to say nothing of your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you, from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident in your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. At the same time, prepare a guest room for me. For I am hoping that through your prayers, I will be graciously given to you. You see, right away, we see that Paul is bold in his talk with Philemon. So my first point is just to be a bold mediator when it comes to different conflicts and different situations that arise. 
You see Onesimus as he was a runaway slave. He right away really writes to back to Philemon and he says, I am bold enough in Christ to command you to, re to do what is you required. To the point. But he goes on to say, yet for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my in, in imprisonment. You see, what, it, what is crazy is that since Onesimus was a runaway slave, back in that day, Philemon actually had the right to, to kill Onesimus if he wanted to um, for being a runaway slave. And so, and so throughout this, we see that Paul just bold in his way of approaching Philemon. We see that in verse 8 and also in verse 21 when he says, Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. So Paul is telling Philemon what he wants, what he wants him to do with Onesimus. And he's saying, not only do I know that you will do what I will tell you, but I know that you will also do more than what I have required you to do. And I looked up the definition of what, the, what does it mean to be bold? What does it mean to be bold? It, bold means not hesitating or fearful. So when we see a conflict when a situation, as that example that I gave with uh, the food between those two students, you know, to not hesitate or have any fear of approaching certain conflicts that arise in our lives. And my second point is to be a gracious mediator. So what, is it, what does it really mean to be gracious? It means to be merciful and compassionate. You see, what, it, what I love about Paul is that, that Christ first showed grace to him. Like Paul was first known as Saul. He was a killer of Christians. And, and he ran into and to God, and, and God showed him grace and totally changed uh, Paul's life around. And so now he's showing grace to Onesimus throughout this whole thing. And he actually, in a way, is also showing grace uh, to Philemon as well. As he says uh, in verse 13, I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. You see, Paul what, like, developed this connection with Onesimus, and he's like, man, Onesimus actually is a pretty good guy. I could see how I could use him for my ministry and how he could help me and what I, I need to accomplish for Christ. But he was, he was gracious, and, and he gave, himself, gave uh, Onesimus back to Philemon. We also see uh, that Paul is a selfless mediator. Yeah. Again, same thing. We see this again in verses 13 and 14 where he goes again saying, I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion but of your own accord. You see, he wanted to have Philemon's permission. Even though, even though Paul had the right in a way to keep Onesimus with him, he wants to ask Philemon for his permission in order that if that may be able to, uh, if he may be able to do that. We also see this in verses 18 and 19 when he says, If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand and I will repay it to say nothing of your own and me, even your own self. You see, he was, he was selfless in a sense, giving up his own life for Onesimus since Philemon had the right to take Onesimus' life if he wanted to. You see, he, he says, I, I will repay everything back. Anything that, anything that Onesimus owes you, whether it be his life, whether it be uh, money, whatever, whatever work he still owes you, I will take care of it. I will pay for it. And he sends him back with this letter saying, this is what I will do. You see, we're, we're all going into ministry. Some of us are going to be counselors, pastors. Some of us are going to be working with kids. All different types of ministries that each one of us are going to be heading into. And even if we're not heading into ministry, I don't know about you guys in the, over there that are new, but you know, whatever you are heading into as well, like there are going to be conflicts and there are going to be situations that arise that we are just going to have to deal with, that are going to come up. And so 
in order to, and what we need to do to, to deal with these conflicts, like I said before, is to be bold, to be gracious, and to be selfless. Not, not going into any conflicts that to want to get something for our own self, to gain like, hey, look at what I did, look what I resolved, but all just for the sake and the glory of God. You see, um, as well as, as, as conflicts arise, we need to show grace to the person that first initiated the conflict, the one that stirred up the trouble, the one that caused all the mess, and the one that was giving everybody a hard time. We need to first show grace to them, take them aside and let them know, hey, you know, yeah, what you did wasn't all right, but, but we forgive you, I forgive you. And then when we approach a conflict, like I said, don't do it to make yourself feel better about the situation, but approach them looking out for the best interests of others. And so this, this is amazing what, what Paul did for Onesimus. You know, he probably didn't even know Onesimus at first as, as Onesimus came to, to him and and was, and was talking with him and engaging with him. But through their conversation, that's when Paul developed this relationship with Onesimus. And he said, all right, I will give him back to Philemon. You go back and you tell Philemon what I want you to do and what I have for you and to forgive you and that I will repay everything back for you. So, so once again, what can we learn from what Paul has, what Paul, uh, has shown to uh, Philemus, uh, Onesimus as he dealt with this conflict between Philemon and Onesimus. We can learn to be bold, we can learn to show grace, and we can learn to be selfish in the midst of every conflicting selfish. situation that arises in our lives. We need to show people the same grace, the same love, the same mercy, the same compassion that Christ has shown us. You know, there may be times in our lives where we are like Paul, where we have to deal with the conflict, we have to deal with the situation, we have to settle it, we have to figure it out between the two people. And there may be times where we are like Philemon, where someone has done us wrong, where they have hurt us in some way. You know, how are we going to respond? And there may be times where we are like Onesimus, where we're the ones that have done something wrong, where we're the ones that caused and stirred up the conflict. How are we going to want to be treated in the midst of, of that conflict? How are we going to want people to love on us? And that's the same love and the same grace that we need to show others as well. You know, I, as I was reading this, I, I've been going through a lot myself, but one thing that um, really, really got me going was I was thinking about my mom. And how my mom has, she's been through a lot of different things. Uh, I remember uh, growing up and uh, there was my, my grandpa, and she would always be going and like going and seeing him and, and, and spending time with him, bringing him food, at times letting him even live in our own house. And uh, always was showing grace and compassion upon him. And after he passed away, I actually came to find out that, um, my grandpa, as she was, as she was raised by, by them, uh, he actually abused her sexually. And, and it killed me when I found that out. Uh, and this was after, after my grandpa had passed away that she let me know this. And, and, I, and I was thinking back on how my mom treated my grandpa despite the things that he had done to her when she was younger despite all the, all the sexual abuse, like she still loved him. She st still showed grace to him. She still showed mercy despite what he had done to her. And, and she was, my mom, she was bold in the fact that, that she was bold enough to stand up and be there for her grandfather, for my great grandpa, and, and to help him she was not hesitating. She didn't show any fear. She still helped him despite what he had done. She showed grace to him, saying, hey, you know, like, even though you did all this to me, 
I'm still going to take care of you and I'm still going to love on you and I'm still going to be with you. And she, she was selfless as well. You know, she, she, despite what had happened, she gave herself still to him and did things for him despite what he had done to her. And so that's kind of what I want us to get from this as we look into the book of Philemon. Knowing that there are going to be people that come into our lives that are going to hurt us, that are going to abuse us, that are going to drag us down, that are going to say things about us behind our back that may not necessarily be true, and try to tear our name down, especially as more as we go into ministry. But despite anything of what they have done, or despite anything of what they say, what we can learn, especially from Paul, and saying, hey, look it, no matter what happens, I will fit the bill. I will take care of it. I will help you out despite what you have done to me. And so that's kind of what I want to leave you guys with, is what can, what can we do? How can we love on others? And how can we approach different conflicts and different situations in our lives that arise? Let's pray. God, thank you so much, Father, uh, just what we can learn from, from Paul.